What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, KYP561. I'm coming in here this evening to talk to you all about last night's episode of Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. Um, what's this? Season 6? And don't know what episode, but let's go ahead and get into it. Um, we show, of course, messy-ass Carly over here meeting up with Sierra. Talking about she's coming to find out. You know, basically what went down between Sierra, Mariah, and Sierra's husband, um, Shooter. So, she's over there, of course, acting like she's all concerned. Talking about how her and Sierra them became good friends and this and that and that and the other. Which I just think is a bunch of bullshit. Just because a bitch do your eyebrows or whatever, that don't mean that's your bestie. But, whatever, child. We know Carly, she's just trying to get in where she fit in. So, anyway, she goes over there. And then she makes this comment talking about how she don't understand how she keeps finding herself in the middle of people's drama and bullshit well mainly because you walk your ass right into it you know uh you be the main one talking about you know you don't have anything to do with this or whatever or you know you try and like you be so concerned with what's going on but kind of you you just be going to just to get the tea child that's it you can really give two fucks about what these folks really got going on in their life that's why i don't even understand why i be cheating be fucked up with somebody like you but anyway child um so Sierra's telling her basically what was going on and what happened and how the shit got blew up and all this and whatever. So then Sierra goes and she makes the comment talking about she don't understand how Mariah can do this to her. She treated her as if she was her, you know, a little sister or whatever. And then she goes on to say that um, Mariah pretty much fucked up her home talking about her home was happy. Well, bitch, not when you just sat here on TV a couple of episodes ago and sprayed all y'all motherfucking business talking about, you know, your husband, he put his complaints out there. You put all your, your bedroom business out there on the table. So now you're going to turn around and act like your home was just so, so happy. Come on now, you need to get off your bullshit too. Now that don't justify what the fuck happened, you know. But my thing is, just like you was so easy to sit down at that table and tell, um... Jock and Carly your business If you consider Mariah to be like your little sister I'm more than for sure That you basically told her the same thing Meanwhile giving her all the ammunition That she needed to be able to fuck your man whenever Okay I'm gonna keep telling y'all Mind who y'all tell your business to child. So then we go over here to um, Waka He is out on a little date with Charlie which is Tammy's daughter Or whatever Um, It really ain't too much to it Um he was basically asking her what she thinks that he can do to get back in Tammy's good graces or whatever. And he was like, you know, what can I buy her or whatever. And see, I'm going to need y'all niggas to stop thinking that when you fuck up the way that he has fucked up, that you could just go buy her a purse or take her on a trip or buy her a damn dog or some shit. And it's going to be okay. You know, I'm going to need y'all to stop thinking that. But at the same time, I'm going to need y'all ladies to stop accepting that shit because you all you all put that shit in their heads that it is okay you know for them to just go and buy y'all some shit and it's all right until the next fuck up so anyway um charlie was basically saying child my mama don't need no dog she already got one she don't need no damn purses she already got plenty and y'all done already been on some damn trips even though y'all didn't invite me but i'm just saying <laughs> so uh little charlie she's cute enough you know i think that um she's of course uh camera shy or whatever because we have not i don't think i've ever seen charlie if i have it's probably only been once you know so um i'm gonna just go ahead and just get at you know she's camera shy and it's a little awkward for her so you know and plus she's what they say she is 10 11 whatever so anyway um that was that Charlie about um uh, time over here talking about she making wine really time so so you you making wine where the fuck is this wine distributor at that you just rolled up to and say, you know what, I'm going to make me some damn wine. Let's make it happen. Because I need to find him because I got me some ideas. I can put me some put me some shit out there on the shelf too. <laughs> okay, but anyway, she said she's making wine. She invited KK down or whatever. So, you know, she can share the news with her and, you know, whatever. Child, KK shows, shows up. Look like KK got that same damn dress on that Tommy had on when her and Tierra had gotten to that fight. When Scrappy basically sat both of them down and thought that it would be a good idea for him to be able to fuck around with both of them whenever he wanted to. 
that same that same damn dress that Tommy had on. They had all her puss hanging out. That looked like the same dress that KK had on yesterday. And if it wasn't, it still was not age appropriate. I'm gonna need y'all people to get y'all shit together. I understand that once you reach a certain age and you still look good, you still want to be able to let a bitch know I still got it and I can hang with the rest of y'all young hoes. I, I get it. I completely get it. But at the same time, you don't want to look like the old bitch that's trying to look like the new, the, the, the young bitch. Because that's, that's basically what it looks like. But anyway, KK pretty much let her know, listen, how the fuck you a goddamn alcoholic and you around here talking about you finna be making alcohol or whatever Tommy says she ain't no goddamn alcoholic you know um you know she went to talking about how she wouldn't be able to do all these things that she do on a daily basis if she was an alcoholic which KK KK didn't say she was an alcoholic KK just said the bitch drinks every day and it's a difference you can you can drink every day but not necessarily be drunk but it's just a simple fact that bitch if you can't go a day without drinking you might have a problem and I think that that's what KK was saying. KK was telling her, you need to go get you some professional help. And while you're doing that, you need to fix whatever the fuck is going on with you and your mama. Because you only got one mama, and your mama only got one you. But I think that that situation between Tommy and her mom, I think that it's a lot that has gone on with that. And it's going to take more than just a couple of sit-down sessions with Dr. Jeff on a goddamn Love & Hip Hop show to actually fix that shit. So, um, let me see, um... Child Deb. Deb said, fuck y'all. Okay, Deb got tired of y'all talking about her helmet hair. Deb got tired of y'all talking about her hairdos that they put pump it up spritz in when them shits don't move. <laughs> Deb done when it got her motherfucking lace front on y'all ass. And I must say that it looks nice. Deb looked really nice. She didn't look like the old bitch trying to look like the young bitch. Okay. She actually looked softer like she didn't look as um hard as she normally looked you know what i'm saying uh, they got her wardrobe together she didn't come in there with them um dress for less hard ass cardboard suits that she used to be wearing you know she she looks really good she looks good she basically was telling um walker that he need to get his shit together he need to get his shit together and he need to get his shit together with tammy because ain't damn another bitch coming up in her house talking about she's coming up in there with walker so whatever the fuck you need to do to fix it you need to go ahead and fix it all right so that was that um we kind of find out that stevie had filed for um custody of the baby you know if in fact it was his and he also had requested that the judge uh drug test jocelyn so that's what he was talking about when he was saying he did some things when he was upset and, you know, he knew that it was going to piss Jocelyn off, whatever, whatever. So, we find out that that's what that was or whatever. Um, Jocelyn gets in the in the car after the court hearing and she's gotten this information or whatever. She's talking to her lawyer. And she's basically just dragging the fuck out of Stevie, to, saying how... It ain't nothing that we hadn't already heard, but basically saying how um, he's, uh, he's million dollars behind in his child support. Um, he's on probation because he can't test clean for drugs and... You know, all this stuff and saying, basically saying, bitch, how dare the fuck you tell a bitch to drug test me when you got motherfucking drug issues or you've had drug issues in the past or whatever. Now, my thing with Stevie is um, they, they like to play that cat and mouse shit. He likes to play that. He likes to play the fucking games with Jocelyn as well as Jocelyn likes to play those games with him. But my whole thing is, Jocelyn, you sat there and all that shit that you said about Stevie, this is shit that you knew about before you got pregnant and you decided to have a baby or get a baby with somebody that has these issues so once again that says a lot about about you i mean i ain't really got much um faith in the shit you got going on anyway but i'm just saying y'all we got jock over here honey he got him a new song called moving and grooving listen when i <laughs> When I heard the song, I immediately thought about um, Justin J. Because, you know, when Justin J, when he be talking, he be like, honey, she was just moving and grooving and just moving. That shit be so funny to me. <laughs> that shit be so damn funny to me. But when I heard Jock's song, I said, wait a minute, honey, he might need to cut Justin J a check, okay? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I thought that was cute. I couldn't even tell you. I don't know if I like the song or not. I just got stopped at the 
the title of the song or the hook of the song or whatever, child. I just I just thought that that was cute. But anyway, um, uh, after he gets finished performing, uh, Tommy and Jessica Dine were there, you know, basically to support. So he comes over there. He starts talking to them. Jessica Dime, she's still trying to figure out the dynamic of Jock and Tommy's relationship because they ain't really saying what it is. And once again, um, Jessica, you just need to mind your damn business. If they not saying what it is, that means it ain't none of your goddamn business. <laughs> okay? Now, I understand that you want to know for one to be nosy and for two so you can, you know, I guess put your homegirl Carly Red up on game or whatever. But Jock has made it clear that Carly is not his woman. Therefore, he can do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Okay, now you can take that and do whatever you will with it. Fucking Tommy and I already said, you know, fuck that bitch. I don't give a fuck about nothing that got to do with her. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you and then you talking about, well, don't you think that you should tell Carly? Didn't this man just tell you Carly ain't his woman? So, <laughs> she was getting on my nerves with that. So, then you have Sierra finally meeting up with Mariah. Now, Sierra says that she finally found it within herself to go ahead and have a sit down with Mariah number one because she's taking Carly Red's advice and number two because Mariah has been blowing her, up her phone now Mariah what the fuck could you have possibly been blowing up Sierra's damn phone for like what what why would you be calling her or was that just a y'all trying to do these damn impromptu um storylines or whatever and you just fuck up and Put your foot in your damn mouth, cause I could I wouldn't know why Mariah would be reaching out to you about anything, but whatever we gonna go ahead and play along. So anyway, um, she gets there, and uh, she basically wants Mariah to tell her what the fuck happened. So Mariah goes into when Sierra had some sort of event, and Shooter was there, and he was drunk, and she told Mariah to take him home. Mariah claims that she was lit at that point herself. Now, first of all, I don't give a fuck if she wasn't. Uh, Sierra, why would you ever let a drunk bitch take your drunk husband home? This is why y'all young bitches don't need to be married. This is why. This is exactly why. Y'all motherfuckers don't know shit about nothing. <laughs> and it ain't it ain't everybody, but it's 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 enough. It's enough for y'all asses, okay? You need to you need to you need to learn these niggas before you just up and and get into relationships and, and, and marry these motherfuckers. Like you don't know these these men. And vice versa, because some of y'all men don't know some of these hoes either. Okay. But um anyway, child, like I said, why would you ever let another bitch take your husband home? But okay, we're gonna roll with it. So she says that while she's taking him home or whatever, you know, he's groping her and feeling on her and pulling on her and whatever, whatever. And by the time she got him home, before she knew it, one thing led to another. And just basically, they was fucking. So as you sitting here trying to tell me to my face that not only was you fucking my husband, but you fucked my husband in my house. All right. <laughs> okay. So she goes through all of that. The only thing that Sierra can think to say is, Bitch, you is lying. You got the body of a 13-year-old boy. My husband would never da da da. Bitch, your husband told you out of his own mouth that he fucked her. So what are you talking about? What are you talking about? It don't matter what the fuck she looked like to you. It's something that the bitch had going on that your husband liked. So I don't even understand why would you even fix your mouth and say some shit like that. It ain't like she's saying he slept with her. He's saying that they didn't. He's saying he did. So, so regardless on how it led up to it, this shit happened. So, once again, this shit ain't making no damn sense to me. So, anyway, child, that goes back and forth or whatever. Mariah's basically telling her, I don't give a fuck how you take it because at this point, you're just basically a joke to me and whatever, whatever. So, old Sierra, she tries to haul her damn purse across the table. It was just so, it was just it was bad acting. It was really, really bad acting. If you want to do scenes like this, you need to at least have an amateur actor paired up with a seasoned act actor. So that way, the seasoned actor can carry the scene and it can pretty much cover up for the bad acting that the new actor got going on. But two bad motherfucking actors? Uh-uh, that ain't, that, that ain't hitting no shit. Mm-mm. <laughs> you know shit. So uh, then you got Tammy in here. She talking to Charlie, basically trying to get the tea from her as far as what her and Walker did on their little skate date or whatever. 
And so um, Charlie was basically telling her that she needs to go on a date with him and he's sorry and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, child, the results are in. Now, all this time, Jocelyn have been rolling around here, honey, about how she knows Stevie's the father and this and that and that and the other. Now, your ass was mad as shook while your brother was trying to open up that goddamn envelope to see what them damn results was. You was already trying to prepare us and everybody else if the results came out anything other than Stephen Jordan is your damn baby daddy. You right here talking about, you know, because you know how Stevie is. He probably paid somebody to say that he's like, hey, girl, uh-uh, shut up. <laughs> shut up and I can. And I was like, mm-hmm, now what the fuck you over here shaking in your damn boots for since you so damn 99.9. What they be saying on Mari? I'm a, I'm 200% sure. I'm 199, blah, 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 percent sure, blah, blah, blah. If you all of that... Why are you over here shaking in your damn boots, having about to have a goddamn anxiety attack and all of that bullshit? But anyway, child, um, the baby is his or whatever. The shit came out of the baby is his. And um, then she goes to talking about, oh, now she pissed. And now she don't want to have, she don't want him to have nothing to do. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to adjust this shit real quick. Because y'all know I'm in my, new, in my new recording space and I'm still trying to get adjusted him. But yeah, but now she going on talking about how she don't want him. She don't want to have him to have nothing to do with the baby. She gonna take the baby and she going back to uh, Miami. And the only thing that he could do for her is just cut the check. Girl, get the fuck out of here, Chad. Get out of here. But uh, so now we go over here to Tammy's um, wine tasting or whatever. So um, the whole cast was there basically, Chad. Everybody came out, even old Rashida done came from out of hiding. Now my thing is this, Rashida. You can bring your motherfucking ass out here to taste some goddamn wine, but you can't take your ass over there to uh, goddamn uh, Jasmine Princess Jasmine house to see what the hell going on with with your goddamn husband and her damn baby. That shit, they're crazy. But whatever, child. So anyway, she um she shows up. Um, everybody was there except for Carly. Stevie wasn't there, and of course, Jocelyn wasn't there. But other than that, I think everybody else was there. But anyway, child, um, Karen shows up, and uh, she had a surprise for um, Tommy or whatever. She had Scrappy on the phone or whatever. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I kind of got a smile when I um, heard him on the phone or whatever. You know, it was good to hear um, hear his voice or whatever. I mean, I ain't, I ain't really no Scrappy, Scrap Daddy on fan like that, but for whatever reason... I was kind of happy to um, to hear that it sounded like he was in uh, good spirits or whatever. So he just basically told Tommy um, congratulations and that he was proud of the shit that she had going on. And that, um, you know, he's he supports her and da-da-da, da-da-da. So that was good. And um, that made her smile as well. She was a little giddy or whatever. Um, let me see. Child, lovely Mimi. I just don't know how much. I could take. <laughs> um, she comes in looking like fucking Ariel. She looks a hot ass mess. Like, girl, you doing too merch. Okay. So anyway, she shows up and everybody looking like, who the fuck is this bitch? Like, nobody even know who the fuck she was. So anyway, um, Tommy introduces her to everybody, whatever, whatever. This bitch, her messy ass, she go right into the shit. She tells Jessica, girl, you know, I ain't seen you since um we was at um Jocelyn video shoot. Whatever, whatever. So everybody was like, bitch, what? <laughs> the fuck you was doing at Jocelyn video shoot or whatever. So Tommy was like, you went to Jocelyn video shoot? So she was like, yeah, I did. She was like, oh, you fucking with her now? So she was like, yeah, you know, just like you claim, you know, just like you say you wanted to, you know, turn on a leaf and start over, whatever, whatever. I think Jocelyn is, you know, genuine and trying to do the same thing or whatever. So, I guess in the midst of that, Tammy must have saw that the shit was finna go the wrong way. So, she tried to change the subject. But in the midst of her trying to change the subject, she cut Jessica Dime off. So, then Jessica Dime starts going in on Tammy. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? Because from my understanding, I mean, I never thought that they had a friendship. But I didn't necessarily think that they had a beef either, you know. But, um... Yeah, so I didn't think that they necessarily had a beef either. So apparently, because I was like, well, what the fuck y'all got going on? As soon as I said that, 
Jessica goes to telling us that they had some type of word exchange on fucking Instagram. Listen, y'all gonna let this goddamn Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook be the damn death for y'all. I have never seen so much drama that stems from a bitch typing some shit. Like, <laughs> that shit just be fucking hilarious to me, child. That shit be fucking hilarious. But anyway, child, Tammy said some shit about she didn't think that grown people should be wearing... Well, not necessarily grown people, but grown people over a certain age shouldn't be wearing color hair. Now, to a certain extent, I completely agree. But if I can recall, Tammy, do you have blue hair? Um, one of these goddamn seasons? Or it might have been this damn season. I know I done seen your ass with some damn blue hair. Okay, so, I mean, um, let these people do what they want to do, child. But anyway, so they, they start going at it or whatever. Next thing I know, Tammy grabbing a drink. What's this grabbing a drink shit? Y'all bitches be supposedly so much about it. But the first thing you do is grab a goddamn drink. And Jessica told that bitch, um, I don't throw drinks, bitch. I whoops ass. Now, Jessica talks a good game. However, I ain't seen Jessica whoop nobody ass yet. <laughs> I haven't seen her act like she was trying to whoop somebody's ass, but I ain't seen Jessica put her hands on no goddamn body. Now, she got all the shit down. Now, she got the, the mannerism. She got the, you know, all that shit. She got all that shit down pat now. But I just ain't seen it put into, into action. So, I mean... I guess, girl. But, uh, whatever. So, anyway, um, I seen, like, after that, soon as shit calmed down with Jessica and Tammy, Tommy turns into Dr. Jekyll on, uh, on girl ass. You know, basically saying, you know, it's, uh, I can't fuck with a bitch who fuck with somebody that I don't fuck with and this and that, that and the other. And I'm saying to myself, okay, you, you going in on Jessica why you ain't going in on lovely Mimi? Because it's apparent. Didn't, they, didn't that bitch say she was at the video shoot too? You know what I'm saying? So why you so goddamn mad with Jessica, but you ain't got shit for lovely Mimi? That's the bitch that you should have been throwing out your motherfucking party. Because that's the bitch that came up, there, came up in there and got the shit started. Okay? So not only did she start shit between um, Tammy and Jessica... That shit rolled over into Tommy and Jessica. And then she proceeds to keep running her goddamn mouth. And now she got Mimi over here pissed off with Melissa. And Melissa ain't even motherfucking now. But then I was a little confused with that too. Because Mimi, you know that Melissa and, and Jocelyn are friends. You said that shit in the very beginning when we first got introduced to Melissa. You already knew that she was friends with Jocelyn. So... I don't understand what your damn problem is, but I guess we're gonna see that shit unfolding later on down in the air chat, I guess. Um let me see. Oh, and then after that, shortly after that, in comes Tommy's mama. So Lord knows what that shit finna be like. <laughs> oh, Tommy just can't catch a break, child. I told y'all I'm rooting for Tommy. I want Tommy to win, but girl, you just got a lot of shit going on, child. You just gonna have to we through that shit one 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 day at a time, child. So anyway, that's pretty much all that happens uh, on tonight's episode. So um, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, share the video, all that good shit. I will be back in here in the next couple of minutes with my basketball wise review. And so until then, y'all, peace out.